Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mamba Hamisi. My name is uh, Hamisi Mamba. I was born and raised in Africa, a small country called Burundi. Burundi is a small country near Congo, Tanzania. I had a good education if you compare it to other people in Burundi. I built school. I had my business and administration degree. I've been working as sales and marketing manager and had a five great experience in sales and marketing. Three years I was uh, sales and marketing in a local and after I got uh, a promotion I was in sales and marketing in the region. That means Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, and Uganda. In two, uh, 2010, I met Nadia Nijimbere, and we got married in 2012. At that time, she was human rights activist in Burundi. Both together, we came in, in a minority, Duatuti, and which was not easy for us, and especially for her, because being human rights activist and Tutsi, it's like a sin. She was persecuted, and we decided that she had to flee the country. And she came to the United States. At that time, my sister, she was living here in Michigan, in Grand Rapids, but she used to live in Freedom. Is anyone know Freedom House Detroit here? Yeah. So at that time, when she came here, my wife, she was, uh, sorry, my sister, she was about to leave Michigan and go to live in Texas because someone like me from Africa living in Michigan is not easy. <laughs> They decided to say, okay, let's leave and go to live uh, in uh, a warm uh, area. But my, my sister, uh, my, my wife, when she came here, so we didn't plan for her. And they say, okay, you can't move because you don't know how it's gonna be. Let's send you to Freedom House. And she ended up in Freedom House. And my sister, of course, they left and they, they are living now in uh, Texas, Dallas. After a couple of days, she found out she was so pregnant. And she was pregnant with twins. I was in Burundi. So we'll communicate like once in two weeks. And nobody knew where she was because I was in a business. I didn't have that much problem as she had. I can say she created me the problem because before that I was fine. <laughs> so after finding out that she was pregnant, I tried to apply on a visa so I can join them. So my dream was to welcome my two girls in the world, but unfortunately I couldn't. I got denied visa. It was not easy being a f for the first time a dad far away and I say okay no problem so I can try when they will be one years old I tried again got denied okay I say okay let's leave so we let's hope but the time the only way I could join my family is the United States has to grant her asylum so then I can come to the United States. That took long. In 2015, I decided, I say, let me try again. I tried again. I got a visa. So I came to the United States. 
I can't forget that day when I saw for the first time my kids. I was crying from the airport up to home. I was, is it really? I can touch them? <laughs> but that was the beginning of challenges. Imagine someone who's coming from Africa who doesn't speak English. He's coming, they are living two girls in the house and you're a stranger, you're coming. So how are you gonna, who you are first of all? And being a dad for the first time with the twins, that was a critical moment. But we tried and I learned a lot being a dad for the first time was at the end of the year, it was almost in November, the weather was so, so bad, I, was, I couldn't even go outside. <laughs> so, st st staying home alone, and waiting for the girls to, from job and the others from school, and start talking and asking me something in English, and asking, I couldn't, you know, they are three years old. So from there, I start learning English, watching cartoons. <laughs> and I know, I know the songs, yeah. <laughs> so then sometimes they used to come with something. And one day they came and they asked me, you know what is this? I was looking to my wife, I don't know, it's elbow. I said, oh, okay. So I can't forget that, that's my first word, you know. <laughs> and the cheek. At that time, uh, I stay home because I couldn't work. I was waiting for my work permit. And I got a chance through Freedom House. Let me explain Freedom House. Freedom House is a temporary place where all people around the world, when they fled the country, they came in a Freedom House and they got our support. So we've been visiting Freedom House and one day, I met this guy called Matthew Baham from Prosperous Detroit. And I start talking about my background. And then he asked me what I want to do. I say, I wish I can do a business. But that was like a dream, you know? Like when you're talking something, I want to do the business, but you don't know how it's going to be. You know? And I say, okay, you have a program in Freedom House so you can be enrolled, so you can, uh, be trained as, I mean, being an entrepreneurship uh, program. I said, okay. So I started the program and I graduated. After one year, I got my work permit. So now I start life in the United States. I can drive. <laughs> I can enjoy the summer. <laughs> and try to find a job in my field. When I was talking to people, I was saying, they were asking, when did you come? I said, just one year. So when did you learn English? I said, I just learned English in nine months. Really? Are you? They said, yeah. I said, you're doing good. So in my mind, I said, oh, this is a big challenge, so I can get a job in my field. So if I was able to learn English in nine months, so I can get a job, you know, I have the skills. But no one wanted to hire me because no one considered my diploma, and somehow they were saying your English is weak, so we are sorry. So that was tough for me and my wife. And then I decide to go to find a job because I have to survive. I end up in a factory in Wellville, in Belleville, the factory called uh, Wellington got paid $10, but at the moment I was there, I learned a lot. The one thing is that youth in America, young generation, they complain for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so 
I was so, so, so sad. I was asking, what? Why are you complaining? <laughs> the bus come to in front of your, your home and you just go in the bus and they drop your school, you, you eat at school, you go home and you open your tap, you drink water. <laughs> you, do, you do have everything. So why are you complaining? You start, you, you have a job from your age. So I, I didn't understand that. And at that time was, we're trying to save some money. So that, the idea was coming and say, okay, so we can't find a job. We can't go to school because we don't have asylum. We can't afford the money to pay money for school. So the only way to get out of this situation is to create a business. That's the only way. Okay, say, okay, let's work hard, 12 hours a day, seven days. We're gonna save some money, and then day we're gonna come with the idea. We don't have asylum. President Trump is being elected. My wife, she been waiting for four years just to get an interview. That we say, okay, so we wanna stay in Detroit. People are amazing, but we're gonna be deported. So we have to find a way the only solution we have to cross a border and go to Canada. And we went to see our lawyers and we, we talked to them about the situation. And they say, better wait. I say, we can't wait, let's go. And they say, okay, let's wait up to April. So from there you can decide what to do. In April we got a letter, okay, interview in Chicago. We drive, we had an interview. Guess what, after one month, we've been granted asylum. So, from there, we say, okay, this is, this is a dream for us. We can raise our kids, but the problem is they're gonna grow by complaining everything. <laughs> So we have to sort out this problem first. So sorting out this problem is to, to be close to Freedom House. So our kids, they visit Freedom House every uh, Wednesday, so they can see what they are, how lucky they are, if we compare to other kids who are coming outside. And then that was the decision to say, okay, we have to stay. And we stayed. Another thing was, to being grateful for this community. What are we gonna do? So we wanna do business and we wanna be grateful. How? And business is, 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 is doesn't match. I say, okay, trying to see what we're gonna do. All the businesses have been taken by other people. Ideas are not coming. I say, hmm, some of the ingredients when we want ingredients from East Africa, we have to order them from Texas or Chicago. So was this ridiculous? Why not get in here? So that's the, how the idea came in our mind to have a restaurant, East African restaurant and market in Detroit. But we don't have money. So we have to put our idea somewhere and work hard and then get money. So the idea was one day we're gonna go and show the business plan to Prosperous Detroit. Okay, we wanna do this. So give us money so we can well, after that, Matthew Baham called me and said, Mamba, hey, you still have any idea? I said, yeah. There is one uh, uh, contest called, Hush, you know Hush Detroit? Something in here in America, someone is gonna say, you know Hush Detroit? If you say, I don't know, you really, you don't know? <laughs> a mess supposed to everything, you know? So he phoned me, he said, you don't know? I said, I say, I, because I know now. Yeah, I know. So now I know that's how we go to Google it and then I will understand. 
<laughs> and I say, yeah. And then I say, yeah, there is a contest so that you can, you can win 50K. What I wanted to hear is 50K only. <laughs> That's it. I came back home and then I told my wife, you know what? There is a contest. If you win it, it's 50K. She told me, are you crazy? Who want to give you 50K here? I said, let me try. Been working hard in the morning. I came to Detroit at uh, a prosperous uh, office, filling up, because at that time, I didn't have even the business plan. It's just an idea I have in my mind, so I have to tell him to fill up. So, okay, work together, and then we fill up the application, we send it. After a couple of days, they called me, okay, you've been selected, now you are over 200 businesses. I came back home, I told my wife, you know what, I've been selected 200. <laughs> you are tired, sleep. Okay. After that, they called me again and said, okay, so what you have to do, you have to bring samples of business. We have 35 judges, they're gonna come while you are not there, so they're gonna test and they're gonna select 25 businesses. I came back home, I, cannot, I told my wife, she was, uh-huh, what the next? <laughs> I said, so we have to cook and she told me, mm, I will see. <laughs> okay, the day she, she was like, okay, let me try to cook for you, so then don't say that you didn't win because I didn't cook for you, okay. <laughs> she made a food, and I took the food up to Detroit, and I left. She didn't even ask me how was it, no. And after a couple of days, they called me, hey, you know what? You've been selected in the semifinal, you are in 10. Oh, and she was behind me, said, what is that? I say, wow, we've been selected, okay, so that's good. And I say, okay, now you can, yeah, now it's fine. <laughs> so, but she did a lot of things because she's the one who had the a better connection, a better network than me in Detroit. So that was a critical moment because we've been seeking voters from through the Facebook and people could, should vote through the website of Harsh Detroit. We've been outside of social media for five years, me and my wife, because of our status. So to collect people and tell them what's going on was not easy. She'd been moving everywhere. Churches, mosque, market, telling people that have to vote, but was not enough. And the idea came and said, okay, why not try a pop-up? So then we can cook, we can invite people, they can eat, so they can give us votes. This is what we want, okay. We tried. We, we make a food at home, our apartment, food. And then we went down, we want to see uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Street local. We talked to the every year, hey, we want to use your space. Okay, no problem, do it. And at the end, I said, okay, how much is it going to be? It's for free. Okay. Yeah. People was coming. And after 30 minutes, we sold out more than 100 dishes. People who came after, they didn't say, what's, what's going on? Is it? I said, we've sold out. Oh, my goodness. People start voting, 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 voting. And then... We was in a final, we was four businesses. Yeah. That time I told my wife, we're gonna win this one. Yeah. <laughs> because this is our last chance. In French we say we are playing like the last card. So we have to do everything. But that one you have to present. Yeah. But remember I don't have even the business plan. <laughs> so what I'm gonna present? For all the three finalists, they, they have, they was born here, they are smart, they have everything to win the contest. And, okay, presentation, what am I gonna present? So, I don't know. And then we thought, okay, why not tell them my story? So, others were showing the figures, numbers, uh, projection, and, and I showed my twins pictures and, 
and my my wedding uh, pictures and how I came, what is Burundi, how I get here. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I was asking a question, I was like, okay, yeah, I was explaining. But I told, there was one question they asked, is 50K you're gonna win if you win this contest? Where are you gonna find other money to invest in the business? Hmm. They know that I've been working in a factory for six months. I have a family. I can't even lie. <laughs> so I said, I believe in what I'm doing right now because this is not only a business. This is about inspiring people. People in Freedom House, after getting the work permit, they get lost. They don't know even where to go, what to do. So I want to inspire them. I want to connect them. I want to show them that they can do that. It doesn't matter how long we've been living in the United States. No. Secondly, I want to share my culture. Sometimes people, when you say Africa, they say, you come from Ghana or Nigeria? I'm from East Africa, you know? So we have to teach. You have to show people. Not only, sometimes people will say, oh, you come here just for opportunity. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think me and my wife or all refugees, being in the United States is not a choice. It's a chance. It's an opportunity because other people, they end up in a camp and they're gonna find a lot of disease, cholera, malaria, and they died. So for us, it's an opportunity. So this is what I told them. I said, I wanna share this. I wanna show other people that they can, not even American. It doesn't matter where you came from, you can do that. Yeah. It's not easy, but it's possible. Yeah. And then after, we went to the bar, drinking and... <laughs> but in my mind, I was, if I compare to others, I say, no, I mess up. This, I can't win. And then when I say, bow, bow, fair, it's winning the contest. Oh my goodness. My wife, she was crying like a baby. <laughs> Even me, I was, is it true? So tomorrow you have to go to the um, TV show in the morning and you have to talk. Oh, huh. things are changing, right? So what I'm gonna talk, this is my first time I'm in front of people and talking. Now I'm in the TV. <laughs> so, I didn't sleep that, that night because I was thinking what I'm gonna say. But I learned a lot. The community in Detroit is amazing. You have to be there, everybody, everyone gonna be, oh, what you want me to, Sometimes I have another anecdote I have to tell you. When we was uh, trying to have our second pop-up, Trinosov, Rebecca, I don't know if you know Trinosov. So they write us an email, say, hey guys, we have a big space so you can come over and then you can organize your events. Okay. I'll say, okay, we can do that. And then I went to see them. I say, okay, so how is it gonna be? I say, okay, when you want. I say, we want, say, we want Sunday because my wife, she was working. I say, we want Sunday. So then we can organize it. I said, no, Sunday is our busy day. We can't give you Sunday. In my mind was, ah, it's our money. We're going to pay you. So we have to negotiate, you know? And after they decided, say, okay, no problem. We're going to give you Sunday. You're going to make, so it's, it's fine. And then I asked them that question, how much I will pay you? They say, no, it's fine. It's for free. I was, 
Really? I felt like I was ridiculous. So from there, my mind changed. Oh, I understood, like, doing a business here is not only about money, it's what you are giving back. So I knew, I knew what was Detroit. So this is my first story. So maybe in two years I will come back and tell you the second part of my story. Thank you so much. Amissi Mamba, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>